Welcome. We're going to do something really great. This is going to be the start of a brand new tutorial series in Ableton. It's actually something that I've wanted to do for quite some time. And because I want to say thank you to all of you guys out there who um, encouraged me to make some more videos. And honestly, like, people pretty much didn't even watch any of this stuff up until like recently. So I, maybe it's divine order or the universe that I need to make some stuff. So I want to let you know what we're going to be learning. Uh, sound design. So if you want to be making your own sounds and not just make your own sounds, but know why um, they sound the way they are, um, th this is going to be for you. So I'm going to try to be as brief and to the point and get into the basics because even though it seems like there's so much to this it's actually a bit simpler once you sort of understand the skeletal framework i hope that fit I think it did anyways so we're going to start with ableton's operator and we are going to learn um, subtractive synthesis then we're going to learn frequency modulation synthesis or FM synthesis. And then we're going to do Ableton's wavetable synthesizer, which is wavetable synthesis. Pretty much there's about three forms of uh, synthesis, you know, when you're making your own sounds. And it's those, subtractive, FM, and wavetable. And there are other kinds, but they're basically fall under those three categories. So, and then another one, which is basically wavetable synthesis, but we use sampler and you and um, we pretty much use the same thing, just not scanning through a wavetable. I won't get ahead of myself. We need to start. So we are gonna start with subtractive synthesis and we're gonna do an Ableton's operator. So what we're gonna do here is um, you can just open up a brand new track. I've got these little tracks open, but that's just helping me record this tutorial. So we are either going to right click and insert a MIDI track, or you can push Command Shift T. So this gives us a MIDI track. Now, if you double click on this, you should probably see nothing. Um, I just have these on all of my MIDI channels. So each time I open one up, um, yeah, I just, I pretty much always use an EQ, a compressor, and a limiter on every track I use. Um, you probably will too. Uh, I'd have to imagine at some point. But in any event, have your MIDI track, and we're going to come over here into Instruments, and we are going to select Ableton's operator device. If you have Ableton Live Suite, you will have all of Ableton's instruments. I'm using Ableton Live 11. As long as you're using a suite version, nice suite, um, <laughs> suite Ableton Suite, um, you will have all of these, but you can also purchase them from the Ableton store. So we are going to drag an operator on the track. You can double click on it, or you can grab it, you can grab it to the track. So I'm going to double click right here. And when I play some notes, you won't hear anything. Why? Because our track has to be record enabled. So now if I play some notes, well, you're going to hear some notes. And specifically what you're going to be hearing is what is coming out of oscillator A right here. Notice how oscillator A has a level um, at 0 dB and everything else doesn't have anything on. In fact, just to make this simple for you, because we're going to be learning this really well, um, I'm going to uncheck these. This will deactivate. So if I play some notes and I turn off A, you're not going to hear anything. Similarly, this is just the volume level. Okay, I'm going to leave it up at 0 because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. In fact, actually, I'm going to lower the master volume a little bit just to have a little bit more headroom here. So you're going to see this middle panel. This middle panel is going to update depending on what shell we're in. So right now, the shell that we're in is uh, the master panel. But we want to come over here and click on oscillator A's panel. And you'll see we have a waveform. It's outputting a waveform, which is a sine wave. It's got a nice round sound. Now, we're going to visualize this here because this is very important to under you want to understand your sound. So, we're going to come over to audio effects. If you're in Ableton Live 11, it'll look like this with the categories. We're going to want to select utilities and we're going to want to drag a spectrum on here. So, 
you can see our feedback. Now, if, you're, if yours looks different, uh, everyone has Spectrum, so just find Spectrum. If you're on a previous version, they'll, they'll all just be listed here without these folders. So we've got Spectrum on, on our track, on our operator MIDI track. We're going to hit this little triangle just so we can get more visual feedback here. And I'm going to play the note F. Now, all we're getting here is one note right here. This is F3 at 343 hertz. Now, we are, what you do in subtractive synthesis is you start with a very bright waveform and then you use a filter, which is located right here. You use a filter to sculpt your sound to make it do what you need it to do. And you will use this, which is an envelope, and you will use the envelope, um, the envelope amount to increase um, the effect or dial in the effect, I should say. So we're going to come back over here to shell A, and we're going to go to waveform. And to illustrate this, I'm going to pick something with harmonics. So we have saw waves, square waves. I'm going to use a square wave. doesn't matter if you use square or saw. I personally think the square wave sounds better. I feel like it sounds more open, like it breathes more, and just downright sounds better in my opinion. So I'm going to throw down a square four, which is going to give us that same fundamental, but it's going to add harmonics. So let's do square four. Now watch how this changes. See how there's this one peak right here? Watch how this changes. We're going to be adding um, we're going to be adding um, uh, harmonics, so we're going to get a brighter sound. Listen and watch. So what we have is we've got the fundamental, and then we have three harmonics. They are odd harmonics. That's what makes it a square wave. It, it's all the odd harmonics, whereas the um, saw wave, let's do saw four, you're going to see it's four of them, so you're going to see more in here. Well, actually, you'll still see four, but you see the first four fund, uh, harmonics. It doesn't skip. By the way, you don't have to know all of this. This is just going to be a foundation um, because I want you to really know. Come back and watch this again. Yes, come back and watch it again. Huh. Anyways, let's get into the meat of it. You had to know that. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to go back to square, but I'm going to give it a brighter. I'm going to give it square 64. It's going to be really loud and bright, so just bear with me here. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to turn this frequency down while I play the note. Listen to what happens. So we had maximum brightness with all of these harmonics. Now watch what happens as I lower the frequency. Notice how they get quieter. So what is happening is I have a low-pass filter on this. This is a low-pass filter. And when we click over here in the filter, you can see this right here. This is saying let all of the lows pass through up until the filter cutoff amount, which is at 400 hertz. So if you look at this, everything on this side from, you know, 400 hertz above is getting cut off. So listen to what happens when I move this filter. And I'm moving this with this little yellow, um, little yellow ball here, but like you can do the same thing with the frequency. So why does that matter for us? Well, it's because we're going to use this envelope to manipulate our sound and give us a nice punchy sub bass sound, or just a punchy bass sound. So right now, we're playing an F note at 350 hertz. That's not very bassy. So let's go down here to transpose and let's knock it down. Let's knock it down again. Yes. So let's play this note or play any note you want and let's lower the frequency. Notice how deep it is and it has all the notes removed. Now you might have heard the whoopy whoop whoop. That's exactly what that is. You would put an LFO on that, set the LFO, whoop, 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 whoop it all day long. We'll do a video on that. But we're doing punchy bass. So here's what we're going to do. We need to use our friend filter. Because right now you're probably saying, yeah, man, that's a lot of bass. But, you know, it's, it's too subby. I want punchy. You said punchy. Well, I promised you punchy. You're going to get punchy. Check this out. Now is where the envelope comes in, baby. You've heard about envelopes. Now we're going to really dig in hard. So what we're going to do is see this envelope right here? 
We don't want any attack, so we want zero attack, which means it's gonna. We want our envelope to set uh, to start all the way up, and then it's gonna slope down. So we want it to be open when it starts, and then we want it to zoop, close really quick, kind of like this. We want it to go up, but you don't want to turn the frequency each time. You want to have an envelope do it for you. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we are gonna make sure we are in our filter section, okay? We wanna make sure we're in our envelope, and here's what we're gonna do. We are going to set it rather low, maybe, let's, let's try 200 hertz to start. Here's what it sounds like. Now, let's change the most, because the filter will not work unless you assign an envelope amount. So let's start moving the envelope amount up and see how this changes our sound. Now when it's at 100%, that means it's playing it all the way up, all the way down. And the lower the percentage, it won't be treated as all the way up. So you can dial that into taste. I'm gonna just dial in what I like to hear. So I'm hitting the note while I'm scrolling this to get the right sound. I like that. Now, this filter has a decay. So if I throw in the decay, you'll be able to hear that it'll get a lot uh, shorter because it'll go from high to low quicker and we'll get less of that stab. So what you want to do is you want to play with this till you get something you like. I like that. Um, release, you don't really need a release because it's like a punchy sound. If you hold it, you can hear it ring out. And the reason why is if we go into oscillator A and we make sure we're on envelope, this is basically saying we have it full volume the whole time it gets played. So what you might want to do is come into here and drag this down, which you can also do by dragging the sustain level, and play with the decay as we did before. This is volume, so this is just the volume of A. Before we were tweaking the filter, the filter envelope, now this is the volume envelope. So listen to when we change decay. Nothing, I mean if it's six seconds you won't hear anything. So let's adjust this till we have something we like. So I push the key, even if I hold it, it doesn't ring. But if I put it all the way up, personally I like that because when you're drawing in your MIDI notes later, you want to have that flexibility because if you drag out a full MIDI clip, it's going to play that sub. So unless you want it really short, drag the sustain down. Otherwise, if you want to have that extra functionality, you, can, you get that. Now, if you draw a really small MIDI note, it's, it's not going to sustain, right? So I just leave it open so I have extra flexibility. So what are we doing next? Well, um, we've got that sound and we're basically done. That's subtractive synthesis um, when in creating a bass sound, a sound that is punchy. Um, and it's a sound that is meant to be played um, in a, I guess, staccato fashion, like do, 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 do. Um, typically sounds are either staccato, um, I think I'm saying that right, uh, staccato where they're meant to be like play like a guitar, like doom, 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 or the other sound is the sound that is intended to be sustained as you play it. You know, a sound where you hold a button and it plays and it moves like a pad and, you know, think of nice flowing chords. So that is it for today's tutorial. So we use Ableton's operator. Ableton's operator is mostly known for frequency modulation synthesis, which we will do next. We'll do the same sound, but in frequency modulation. So we'll get to see how that sound is different. And this time we use subtractive synthesis. So a review, subtractive synthesis, it starts with a bright sound and then it uses a filter to manipulate the sound um, into, in, to achieve whatever you're, you're searching for. In this case, we're looking for a punchy sound. Now, if you want, you, you, you could just um, transpose this up. So, uh, sorry. So if you wanted that kind of a sound. So uh, we can process these sounds, but man, I'm scared I've already gone 20 minutes, and if it's any longer than that, I might not get anyone watching this. As long as you guys watched it and enjoyed it, um, like, subscribe, um, comment what else you would like to see. I'm gonna be doing the same tutorial, but I'm gonna be using Operator um, 
put in frequency modulation. So I'm going to use FM synthesis to create the same sound, but it will be different because it will be FM synthesis, and I will um, explain FM synthesis. And then um, in the next tutorial, I'll create a pad sound um, using subtractive synthesis and operator, and then I'll also then do it in the next video with FM synthesis. So if it seems like, I guess it's this is this is just the best way to teach sound design to you guys so you know everything. Done.